Hello, I'm not at home, and I'm at a different location, so uh, the camera's not the best, but the microphone's better. Definitely the microphone's a lot better. Uh, I still look like, it's so funny, there seems to be no color in this camera here. I, I'm like uh, out of a 1950s black and white movie or something. That's what it looks like, or maybe even older, like back to the 30s, the sepia tone or something. So, uh, I last time I was able to go live finally on Facebook, uh, and I'm very, very glad that I'm able to, again, at least for now. Uh, I did John chapter 8, because that was next in line. I, I, we'd gone up through John through 7, chapter 7, where number 8 is next. And I watched it, and the audio was so bad, and the camera was even worse than this one. So I just thought, you know, it's such an important chapter. I'm going to do it again. So uh, I'll be back home uh, at my studio tomorrow, and uh, we'll continue going live as long as Facebook will allow it. Uh, and I want to redo Chapter 8. Father in heaven, thank you very much for this opportunity just to read your word. That's, that's the most amazing thing that we even have this. Thank you, Father, for it. Please encourage us to read it, and please give us your Holy Spirit so we can retain it. Really remember it. Put it in our subconscious. It'll always be there whenever we need to answer. As you promise, don't even be concerned about what you're going to say. You will give us the words to say. But we got to read your word. we got to know it. So, Father, thank you for this opportunity. Please bless it, and please share it. Get everyone to share this, and do it themselves on their own pages, too. That would be awesome. In your name, Lord Christ Yeshua. Amen and amen. Yeshua is the uh, Hebrew pronunciation for uh, the name Jesus. John chapter 8. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came again into the temple, and all the people were coming to him. And he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery and having set her in the center of the court for everyone to see, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery in the very act. Now the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? They were saying this, testing him, so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. And when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Who? He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. I'd love to know what he was writing. Hopefully I'll get to ask him. When they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones. And he was left alone. And the woman, where she was, in the center of the court, straightening up, Jesus said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go. From now on, sin no more. Now that's the part that so many Christians leave out. Oh, yeah, he forgave sins. Forgave sins like crazy. So we have to forgive, too, because he forgave sins. Um, sins against us, yes. Sins against others, no. Sins against children, mm-mm, no. Why would I forgive you your sins against children? No. Jesus said it would be better if you were to have a heavy millstone tied around your neck and you were cast into the sea if you caused any of these young ones to stumble or to sin. Christians, please, believers, please stop saying the same thing over and over again. Judge not lest ye be judged. That's it. And it's King James. Do you actually read King James? No? Well, then why don't you read it for yourself and actually read the verse before it and read the verse after it. Read the chapter that it's in. And then get a concept of context. You know what I'm saying? So same with here, whenever people go, oh, well, who am I to judge? 
Well, there's a righteous judgment. Jesus tells us. Jesus himself tells us to use this. Paul writes about it. It's written all through the New Testament about a righteous judgment due to God's standards, judging by God's standards. Now, I'm not going to judge your salvation. No, no. That's between you and the Lord. But I will tell you, and I'm going to call you out, if you're doing something that's, especially when it comes to children, telling you what, you can do whatever you want with your own stupid adult body, but as soon as you start jacking with kids, you got a whole new set of problems with me. And I hope that there are other Christians who will start speaking up that way and start rising up and start demanding, no, this has got to stop. You're not going to get to indoctrinate our kids. You're not going to groom them that way. What are you, high? What are you, insane? What are you doing? Your father's work just as quickly as possible for his time is short. Your father's the father of lies. Well, the answer is actually yes to all of those above. They are those things. I'm not going to sit back and just go, well, I'll just pray they stop it. No. I'm speaking out. I'm standing up. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on, sin no more. So he knew that she had sinned. But I hear churches, for example, especially ones, for example, have homosexual pastors. Yeah, that's a thing now. A lot of them, actually. Homosexual pastors. That goes directly against God's word. Directly. But nobody says anything. Now, if you're saying, well, uh, you know, hate the, hate the sin, love the sinners, got it? Fantastic. But you don't get to be a pastor. The word's very clear about that. And if you say, well, homosexuality isn't any worse of a sin than any other sin, sexual sin is sexual sin. You're absolutely right there. But the deal is, when it comes to Oh, thank you. When it comes to um, sexual sin, Paul himself wrote, it's a sin against your own body. It's next level. You're going to pay consequences for it. And furthermore, if you're a homosexual, you're a pastor, or even just in congregation, you're attending church services, and you're going, oh, gosh, yeah, yeah, forgive me for my sins, except for that one that I really like doing because I'm not going to stop it. And it doesn't matter what kind of sexual sin it is. It could be same sex. It could be adulterous. Just fornicating outside of marriage. Sexual sin is sexual sin. You don't get to go celebrate it and accept me for it and then call yourself a believer and a follower of Christ Jesus. That's a lie. You're living a lie. You're not. You're not following Christ Jesus because you're going directly against his commandment. And he said, if you love me, follow my commandments. It's not easy. And you have to deny yourself. Deny your desires. You have to. Because you've got to put God first. You've got to put Jesus first. He's our Lord and Savior. He's got to be first in our lives. Once saved, always saved. Yeah. Jesus said that uh, no one can t take my children out of my hand, but that doesn't mean you can't jump out. Verse 12, then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, you are testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, even if I testify if I about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I am not judging anyone, but even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone in it. But I am the Father who sent me. Even in your law it has been written that the testimony of two men is true. I am he who testifies about myself, and the Father who sent me testifies about me. So they were saying to him, where is your father? Jesus answered, you, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would also know my father. You would know my father also. 
These words he spoke in the treasury and as he taught in the temple, and no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. That's awesome. It was good. I still what he's saying. We got to make him stop. We got to shut him up. We got to cancel his Facebook account. Then he said again to them, I go away and you will seek me and will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews were saying, surely he will not kill himself, will he? Since he says, where I am going, you cannot come. And he was saying to them, you are from below. This is where Jesus really brings the smack down. You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, capital H, you will die in your sins, unquote. So they were saying to him, quote, who are you, unquote. Jesus said to them, what have I been saying to you from the beginning? I have many things to speak and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true. And the things which I heard from him, these I speak to the world, unquote. They did not realize that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man, he didn't say if, he said when, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. And He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to Him. As He spoke these things, many came to believe in Him. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed Him, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free, unquote. And they answered him, quote, We are Abraham's descendants and have never yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free, unquote? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is the sin of slave, is a slave of sin, sin of slave, uh, commit sin is the slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak the things which I have seen with my father. Therefore, you also do the things which you heard from your father. This is where it really gets good. <laughs> <laughs> they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, quote, If you are Abraham's children, do the deeds of Abraham. But as it is, you are seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. This Abraham did not do. You are doing the deeds of your father. Unquote. They said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God, unquote. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and have come from God. For I have not even come on my own initiative, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I am saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. You are of your own father, the devil. Bam. And you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father lies. And because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I speak truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not fear them, because you are not of God. Unquote. They're getting really ticked. The Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? <laughs> Unquote. Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. But I do not seek my glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Unquote. The Jew said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died and the prophets died and the 
also, and you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste of death? Surely you are not greater than our father Abraham, who died. The prophets died too. Whom do you make yourself out to be? Unquote. Here it comes. Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God, and you have not come to know him. But I know him. And if I say that I do not know him, I will be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Unquote. So the Jew said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Unquote. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, here it comes. I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Unquote. Well, at this point they went, Oh, we've made a mistake. We totally get it now. Awesome. You are the Messiah. Please forgive us for being so ridiculous. What do we have to do to be saved? And then, oh, no, I'm sorry. No, they didn't say that at all. My apologies. Erase, erase. Uh, verse 40, uh, 59. Therefore they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. <laughs> That's John chapter 8. I hope you don't mind me repeating it because just the last time I did it, it was so bad. <laughs> Hopefully this is a little better and easier to watch. I'll uh, see you, Lord willing, tomorrow. Uh -huh. Jane, how do I stop this crazy thing? Oh, there it is. <laughs>